Howdy, y'all. Active Asshole on Roids here with another glorious rant. That's Active Asshole on Roids, kryptonite for conservatives. I'm off my roids, off my rocker, and on warpaths. So here we go. That stumbled, that stumbled on my words. Uh, tonight, I would like to touch on an argument being touted by Tea Party and right-wing libertarian folks all across the internet. Uh, it's a weak argument, and it's fairly cute, and I, I've seen this argument being employed by many right-wing trolls over the years in many different in many different forums uh, on Facebook and YouTube. It's basically the whole, the same old blame the poor, the rich are rich because they got favor with the almighty kind of crap. But the argument goes like this. Tea Partiers and those affiliated with the religious right are claiming that it is in fact the left, us, and the poor who are the true purveyors of greed and avarice because we envy what the rich have. Because of our envy and jealousy, they claim, we are driven to take what the producers, the 1%, worked hard to earn for themselves. Now think about that. Think about that. The, here, here is an entire movement of people here are a whole bunch of fucking morons who have the gall to basically basically what they're doing is they're pulling a whole we know you are but what am I you know they're 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 <laughs> and it's it's just massive levels of projection in this I mean the the, the top one percent most of them got rich because they're fucking crooks anyway but or because they were predatory down to a fault. You know, corporate crime and all that, white-collar crime and all that jazz. But but you, these right-wingers are trying to turn around and, and turn it back on us. And they've been doing this for a while. And say that we're the ones who are driven by greed because we envy the rich because they're rich. I, I laugh at this shit. I really do because, because for one, it's basically the right wing uh, trying to trying to say that people on the left are not driven by altruism. Because remember, the, many of those in the libertarian movement uh, they don't believe in altruism to begin with. They don't they don't uh, they don't support altruism. They believe it's evil. And, and all that, and but they're they're trying to say that we're driven by a desire to have their stuff, that we're not really idealistic, and we don't really believe in helping the poor. We just want to take what the rich have because they're saying we're too lazy to earn it. You know, I guess I guess I'm too lazy to work 56 to 68 hours a week in a factory sitting, earning earning what many right-wing bullshitters can't earn because they're too fucking stupid to earn it, or because they want to sit at home and have their wife work for them, while they hypocritically take food stamps while bashing people who are poor, other people who are poor, for doing the same thing just because... You get where I'm coming from. It's the same old bullshit that is tied to both social Darwinism, the prosperity gospel idea that you're that rich people are rich because God wants them to be rich, or because they worked that they're rich because they worked hard to get it, even though that's not true. Most rich people really are fucking crooks. There were studies done on this shit. But it's a rehashing of the whole stealing from Peter to give to Paul narrative that the right has been using, which itself is a rehashing of the prosperity gospel from eyes, which itself was used as sort of a side, a peripheral justification alongside social Darwinism back in the late 19th century <laughs> to, to justify not wanting to do anything. And I, I see this kind of, uh, this kind of argument being deployed by the American right, by by right wingers, by by the Tea Party, by the Tea Hottest in this country, the Tea Partiers, who are confronted 
with with the with the historical fact that private charities really didn't do anything to help the poor back before there was a social safety net. When they have this fact thrown in their face, they fall back on this bullshit argument that we're that we the only reason we want to use the the positive state, the modern role of government to help people to ensure their second generation human rights are upheld. That 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 it's rooted not in a belief of in human rights or a belief in the ideals of of, of FDR's four freedoms, but that it's that it's that it's rooted in envy, you know, that it's somehow rooted in the same old keeping up with the Joneses bullshit that they practice on a fucking daily basis, you know, that they've made their modus operandi their whole lives. I mean, if that's their, if that's their whole reply when they have, when they have the hard facts about how private charity did nothing to, to help the poor, or, or better yet, well, did very little to help them in any tangible way. And this was, mind you, this was back in the 19th century, back when resource constraints weren't as heavy as they are now. Back when population levels were lower, uh, private charity couldn't help it. It couldn't, couldn't do anything to put a dent in the, pro in the poverty problem. And yes, there were many among the ruling class who who gave away massive amounts of money to, to charitable pursuits, to philanthropic pursuits, uh, such as Carnegie. You know, he, 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 he gave away a, a massive part of his fortune to, to many uh, philanthropic pursuits. But in the end, it didn't do anything to really further the, the 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 cause of fighting poverty in a tangible way. Oh yes, certainly there was some. There it, it helped lift a few people out of poverty, but overall, the vast majority of the of the people stayed in poverty who were in poverty before. And you know, and 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 then you see a drop in the poverty. A reduction in the poverty level after the social safety net, after the New Deal, after the progressive reforms, after the Great Society reforms were put in place, and right wingers, they, they just don't know how to deal with this. If if the whole I know you are, but what am I being being given a new makeover? Well, being given some kind of makeover is their only real reply. Then they have nothing left. They have nothing. We've won this argument. We've won this argument before they even got out there, before they even got out on the ground running. You know, it's... And I think... You know, I, I think a lot of this comes from, comes from the, 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 the whole... Well, no... And, well, where can I go with this? I keep thinking back to one of my earlier videos where I talked about how the today's 1% are even more predatory than the ones from the 19th century in that they are, in that they will use even private charity just for their own benefit not for the, the sake of actually being charitable to others. That is, they'll use it to get tax write-offs for themselves and for, and for PR purposes. And on, the only people getting helped are, uh, are, are really special cases that make for a good story in the paper. And you throw this up in their face, and they'll still go back to this argument. They'll still, they'll still keep going back to this argument. What it really comes down to is that you know, it's just, it's just projection on a massive level, a, a horrible, uh, it's just the same old projection that the right has been doing uh, since the 19th century. It's the same argument, but, it, it, you know, they keep rehashing the same old argument that somehow they're deserving, that somehow they're deserving. I mean, you know, uh, private, 
you know, th th they might produce employment, but the fact of the matter is, they sure as hell wouldn't pay you a damn thing if the government didn't make them pay, pay you good wages. They certainly wouldn't provide benefits. But, you know, again, the act of ass on roids, uh, no, I don't think I want to stop there. I think I want to switch gears for a second. Yeah, I'm off for the next few days. Um, I joined a uh, group on Facebook called Political Opinions, was there for about five days, left the group altogether, um, mostly because, I, I don't know, lately I've been, I've been having a harder and harder time cannibal trolling right-wingers. I just can't seem to get, get out of me. I think I'm tapped out. But uh, political opinions, uh, the, the, I, I've seen some vile right-wingers in my time, but those are the nuttiest of the vilest of the right-wingers that I've ever met on, on the Internet, anywhere on the Internet. Just horrible, horrible, horrible. I got out of there just because the, everything just evolved into, into name-calling. I mean, I think this was the first time in my life in which I openly just came out and, 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 and sent a message to a, to a black conservative calling him an Uncle Tom for, for supporting the very ideology that, that, Ma, that Martin Luther King derided as a, that, that ideology being conservatism, that Martin Luther King himself derided as a, tr as a Trojan horse for anti-pluralism, as a Trojan horse for every bad cause from states' rights to racism uh, to, to corporate greed that, 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 that will always be used for that very purpose. You know, he actually, he, he actually put out, there was a quote by Martin Luther King about conservatism, about the philosophy of Barry Goldwater being the very antithesis of the civil rights movement. You know, I called him an Uncle Tom, and I told him to take off his blackface and just go, and, you know, I told him, hey, you want to go... Don't you? Ha I was like, don't you have a clan meeting to go to with Clarence Thomas? I bet you have to wear your freaking hood pretty, pretty well to hide your face, though, don't you? Yeah, that was the quickest. Uh, that, I, I, I actually, I went. I was, I was pretty pissed. I, I was pretty angry uh, because this guy kept on rehashing the same old right wing arguments. This, you know, the whole oh, the poor deserve it. The poor deserve to be on the streets. La la la. And I and I just said, hey, uh, if, if you if you, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna support the very ideology that worked to make it where you couldn't even have the right to vote or right to use public venues in the South or or in many other parts of the country, you know, de facto racism being out in the out in the other parts of the country and de jure racism that is enshrined in law being in the South then then you really are the in essence just a fucking uncle tom you know i mean right wing libertarians uh all, all in all they they're they're all a bunch of fucking jokes but but when i see someone who happens to be a black you know who uh, when i see a conservative a republican who happens to be black i don't even i mean how do i i mean I can't hate them. In that case, I really can't hate them. I can only laugh at them. You know, every other right winger out there, I've learned to hate the fucking right. I've learned to fucking hate the right wing with a fucking passion, every bit as much as they hate me. I've learned that, 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 that giving them pity doesn't do anything. Giving them a hard time does a lot for me. But... But African Americans who happen to be hardcore right wingers, I guess you know I, I I don't know it's just it's just I I know they're, they're they're being used as nothing more than photo ops as tokens by the rest of the conservative movement, and deep down I think they know it too, and they're just too goddamn ashamed to admit it. You know, this brings me back to a story, uh, something I told Mike, Mike Thack, one of my friends, Michael Thackett, uh, the truth teller, Michael Thackett. Uh, 
about a about a roommate I had in college who I lived with for about 18 years uh, who was a black Republican um, and this guy he was a captain in the Alabama State Guard and he uh, and he was in private security he, he, he was employed in private security uh, and this guy was a member of the Sons of the Confederacy a group loosely affiliated with with the militia movement and with the white supremacist movement you know the whole sovereign citizens movement right wing identity theology nutfucker movement and you know th this and his father a colonel in the air force was w w was a member of the john birch society for crying out loud these I mean, I don't know how they can, how they can really look at themselves in the face, and join groups, whose who many of whose membership are dedicated to making sure that they that they are returned to second class citizenship. I don't get it. I mean, what kind of delusional self hate does it take to want to re-legitimize the Ku Klux Klan if you're a black man? I mean, I, <laughs> hell, I, every time I'm around him, I just want to bur burst out and do role-playing and pretend like I'm Uncle Ruckus just to fuck with him. Simply because they're so far out, you know, out of their fucking gourd. So fucking crazy, I think Ted Cruz might want to, <laughs> might be considered normal by, 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 by comparison. I'm just, Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, black conservatives, Thomas Sowell, Clarence Thomas, Michael Steele. I mean, I mean dude, I, I understand that the Republican Party in the old days was the party of Lincoln. But those days are past. Those days were past by the time Reconstruction was over. But, uh, well, uh, needless to say, me and that college roommate, we had a, we, we, we had a uh, bad falling out, and we went our separate ways because of uh, differences in political opinion and such, but, you know, I, again, he was one, I think the, one of the last things I said to him before I actually, before I actually moved away uh, this was a few years ago, of course, was that uh, when he goes to his clan meetings, he has to wear a mask all the time. He can't take it off. Because <laughs> it'd be like that one episode of David Chappelle. You know, David Ch Dave Chappelle, and where, well, you, you've probably seen the episode at one point or another. Anyway, that's Active Asylum Roids. Uh, peace out, everybody.